wait! Before we start, do you want a bundle of 30 printable Spanish PDF cheat sheets? Teaching you words and phrases for conversations for free? Then click the link in the description and sign up for a free lifetime account to get access. Hola a todos, soy Lucía. Hi everybody, I am Lucía. Welcome to SpanishFor101.com. Español en 3 minutos. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Spanish. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase, habla inglés. Do you speak English? In this lesson, we are going to learn how to apologize or say excuse me in Spanish. The basic phrase for excuse me is disculpe. Disculpe. We should use disculpe in formal situations, like when we are ordering something at a restaurant. For example, disculpe, un café por favor. Excuse me, a coffee please. We can also use it when asking a question. Disculpe, ¿dónde está el baño? Excuse me, where is the restroom? Another way to say excuse me is perdón. Perdón. Just like disculpe, we can use perdón when asking a question or when apologizing. Both of these phrases can be used for either excuse me or I'm sorry. But if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is lo siento. It means I'm sorry, and it can be used in both formal and informal situations. Lo siento. Unlike the others, lo siento only has the meaning of I'm sorry and not excuse me. Now it's time for Lucia's insights. Please remember that if we accidentally bump into someone on the street, we don't usually say I'm sorry, lo siento. Instead, we say excuse me, disculpe or perdón. Are you able to count in Spanish? In the next lesson, we're going to learn the numbers in Spanish from 1 to 10. Hasta la próxima. See you soon. Hello, friends from SpanishPod101.com. I'm Efraín. And I'm Diego. And today, we're going to give you a quick guide to survive to Mexican Spanish. Enjoy, Enjoy the video! video. Woo! Mexico is a very beautiful place to visit because of its people, because of its culture and uh, many other things. But there is something in the communication that becomes slightly difficult because we have so many usages that are not used in other countries. Give us an example, Diego. Yeah, so for example, so we have a difference between the use of pretérito perfecto and the pretérito indefinido because, for example, in, in Spain, they tend to use the pretérito perfecto uh, for an action that ended recently. So they will say something like, Esta mañana he desayunado cereal or hoy he desayunado cereal. However, in Mexico, we wouldn't say it in that way. We would rather say, Esta mañana desayuné cereal or Hoy desayuné cereal. Now, in Mexico, many things are small. And I don't say that because of the size of the things, but rather because we tend to use a diminutive in so many occasions. So, for example, for showing courtesy or hospitality or kindness, or even when we ask for something and we want to be polite. Uh, so, we can use it, for example, in the adjectives. I could say, Efraín es... Chaparrito. Efraín is short. But we could also use it in the nouns. So we will give you more examples. Diego, como que hace calorcito, ¿no? Sí, hace un poquito de calor. Ch ah, sonará extraño, pero se me antojó un cafecito. Claro, pero en un ratito que terminemos el video, te lo preparo. Ok, y ahorita me lo haces, ¿eh? Claro que sí. Va. There is another huge difference. Mexicans are incapable of saying no. So we create pretexts, excuses, and we delay the offer. Uh, that is something that people of other countries hate about us. So it wouldn't be strange to hear things like Sí, pero al ratito. Muy probablemente, pero yo te aviso. 
Te confirmo al rato. Oh, tal vez. Um, al rato quedamos. O nos marcamos después. So when you hear stuff like that, the other person might be declining your petition. For example, Diego, deberíamos ir a una fiesta hoy. Escuché que esta Ana va, va a dar una fiesta en su casa a las 8. Oh, eh, esa noche. Bueno, Ajá. es que ya tenía un plan con unos amigos. Oh. No estoy seguro. Pues invítalos, invítalos. Eh, sí, sí, pero eh, bueno, yo te confirmo más al ratito. Ok. Bien. Sí, tú me dices. Sí, sí. Another thing you need to know before coming to Mexico is that we tend to overuse the reflexive pronoun te and the suffix le. As we know, the reflexive pronoun te, we use it all the time whenever we use an reflexive verb. And the suffix le is for an indirect object. However, in Mexico, we use the reflexive pronoun te for a request that we want to make it sound more friendly uh, for cheering up the person whom we are asking the, the request. So I could say, Efra. Léete el libro de Rayuela de Julio Cortázar. Es muy, muy bueno. Ok, seguro. And the suffix le, we use it for, once again, another, this is another imperative. And we use it whenever we want something to be done quickly. And it's also kind of friendly and cheerful. So we could probably say, we can use it in the verb correr. It doesn't really need an indirect object. So... It wouldn't be strange to hear in Mexico a thing such as Efra, córrele, que se nos va a hacer tarde para ir al cine. We will give you another example. Diego, échate este vino conmigo, al fin ya no tiene mucho. No, Efra, tú sabes que yo, yo ya no tomo. Nomás un traguito, Diego. No, 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 no. Ah, qué... Pero, ¿qué, ¿qué tienes? ¿Estás eh, un poco triste o algo? No, todo bien, Diego, todo bien. Te veo un poco animado. A ver, cántate una canción. Amigo, ¿qué te pasa? Estás llorando. Pero cántale con ganas. Amigo, ¿qué te pasa? Estás llorando. Seguro es por destenes de mujeres. <risa> no hay golpe más mortal para los So, this is it, friends from SpanishPod101.com. We hope you have enjoyed this video and give us your thumbs up if you want to come to Mexico and meet some friends here. Uh, let us know your opinion right below um, in our comment section and see you in the next video. See you! Did you download your free PDF cheat sheets yet? These conversation cheat sheets are an easy way to speak more because you get cheat sheets for conversational topics like the weather, family, hobbies, and much more. And inside, you'll learn common questions and answers that you'd use in conversations, as well as tons of vocabulary. Don't miss out on this free gift. Click the link in the description to get access. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Ultimate Spanish Pronunciation Guide. In this lesson, you'll learn the top five Spanish pronunciation mistakes to avoid. These are common mistakes that students of Spanish tend to make, so pay close attention and make sure that you don't make these same mistakes too. Are you ready? Then let's get started. Number one, pronouncing the letter H. The letter H is silent in Spanish. Most people learning Spanish try to pronounce it when in fact it should be silent. English speakers in particular are used to pronouncing it in their own language, so they try to do so in Spanish as well. But don't make this same mistake. Take hello, for example. Hola. Notice that Alex does not pronounce the H sound. Hola. Let's move on to number two. Yeah. Many Spanish learners tend to pronounce this consonant incorrectly. Listen to Alex pronounce this consonant in a few words. Niño. Niña. Baño. This letter can be difficult for students of Spanish to pronounce, mostly because they don't have this sound in their language. One trick to pronouncing this sound is by saying the word onion or canyon. It kind of sounds like a combination between an N and a Y sound, doesn't it? 
but don't worry about much of the specifics for now, as we'll break down this consonant in Lesson 7. Number 3. Mispronouncing the letter J. <sighs> the letter J sounds a bit like an H sound in English. This is confusing for many speakers, particularly if their language also uses the Roman letters H and J. But not only this, because if you listen very carefully, it's not the same sound as the H in the English word how, for example. Listen to Alex again. <sighs> it's pronounced further back, close to the throat. In fact, you should feel a little tickle in the back of the throat. This sound is also pronounced with a bit more force. Listen to Alex pronounce this letter in a few words. Jamón, eje, reloj. Number four, pronouncing Spanish vowels. When pronouncing vowels in Spanish, many speakers tend to stretch out the vowels for too long. Spanish vowels should be pronounced short and simple. Listen to Alex. A, E, I, O, U. Now listen to Alex pronounce these vowels in a few words. Pay close attention to the duration of the vowel in each word. Amigo, enero, ir, oro, uva. And finally, number five, mispronouncing the double L sound. Y. Yeah. Double L's are not pronounced the same as the English L sound. Many Spanish learners tend to pronounce it as such or try to extend the sound to compensate. However, the actual sound is quite different. Listen to it again. Yeah. It sounds like a combination of an L and a Y sound. Now, let's listen to how Alex pronounces this sound in a few words. Llamar. Llave. Pollo. We'll break down this sound in lesson six. Now you know the top five Spanish pronunciation mistakes to avoid. Try to be careful so that you don't make these same mistakes. In the next lesson, we'll start learning vowel sounds in Spanish. What's your biggest challenge with Spanish pronunciation? Is it one of these top five mistakes? Let us know in the comments. Stick with us and you'll overcome it quickly. See you in the next Ultimate Spanish Pronunciation Guide lesson. Hi everyone, this is Rosa and today we'll be doing top 10 phrases to use when you are angry. Let's begin. No es de tu incumbencia. It's none of your business. No es de tu incumbencia. It's none of your business. Okay, so if someone asks you about something you don't want to say anything about, like, and you're, I don't know, a bit upset maybe, uh, at this person, like, you can say this. Cállate. Shut up. Cállate. Shut up. So, very straightforward. If you want someone to be silent, <laughs> you can say this. Déjame en paz. Leave me alone. Déjame en paz. Leave me alone. So, if you are very busy or if you don't want like another person to talk to you for a while, um, you can say this. It's not very nice, but you can say <laughs> Estás de coña? Are you kidding me? Estás de coña? Are you kidding me? So, for example, if someone is saying something to you and that thing like really surprises you and you, I don't know, didn't think that that could happen, uh, you can use this sentence. Depending on the tone you use, uh, you can use it with friends and it doesn't have to imply you're angry or, or anything. It's more like a you are surprised, you are, I don't know, you didn't expect to hear that. So, I mean, it's very informal, but uh, it doesn't have to mean that you are angry at the other person. Como quieras, whatever. Como quieras, whatever. So, I don't know, when you are tired of discussing with someone, you just want to end the conversation, you can say, como quieras, like, whatever you want to do, you want, it will most likely be finished. <laughs> Corta el rollo, cut it out. Corta el rollo, cut it out. For example, if someone is making a lot of excuses, is trying to explain something, and you just want them to, to shut up and, yeah, stop 
I don't know, making excuses or whatever, you can say this. Corta el rollo. No quiero hablar contigo. I don't want to talk to you. No quiero hablar contigo. I don't want to talk to you. You want someone to give you some space and not talk to you for a while, you can say that to this person. Estoy molesto. I'm upset. Estoy molesto. I'm upset. So yeah, you can say this if someone has done you something. Um, and yeah, you're feeling a bit mad about it. ¿Y qué pasa? So what? ¿Y qué pasa? So what? Maybe if someone makes a remark about something you said, um, I don't know, the other person like uh, is complaining about something or found some problem, but you don't think that thing is important, you can say, ¿y qué pasa? Um, so what? No me estás escuchando. You're not listening to me. No me estás escuchando. You're not listening to me. When you are discussing with someone and like the other person goes on and on and he isn't really listening to you, you can say this, for example. And this is the end of today's top 10 phrases to use when you're angry. Tell us in the comments below what you say when you're angry. <laughs> Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and check out SpanishPod101.com. Hasta luego! I'm not angry. In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Spanish. Hi everybody, my name is Rosa. Welcome to the 800 core Spanish words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Spanish. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at SpanishPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard decks, and finally master Spanish. OK, let's get started. First is... Hoy. Today. Hoy. Hoy. Today. Hoy a las seis quince. Today at six fifteen. Hoy a las seis quince. Ayer. Yesterday. Ayer. Ayer. Yesterday. Ayer por la tarde. Yesterday afternoon. Ayer por la tarde. Mañana. Tomorrow. Mañana. Mañana. Tomorrow. Hasta mañana. See you tomorrow. Hasta mañana. Semana. Week. Semana. Semana. Week. Siete días a la semana. Seven days a week. Siete días. A la semana. Año. Year. Año. Año. Year. Año bisiesto. Leap year. Año bisiesto. Segundo. Second. Segundo. Segundo. 
Second. Solo un segundo. Ya está second. Solo un segundo. Minuto. Minute. Minuto. Minuto. Minute. Tres minutos. Three minutes. Tres minutos. Hora. Hour. Hora. Hora. Hour. Durante una hora. For one hour. Durante una hora. Reloj. Clock. Reloj. Reloj. Clock. Reloj despertador. Alarm clock. Reloj despertador. En punto. O'clock. En punto. En punto. O'clock. Las tres en punto. Three o'clock. Las tres en punto. Calendario. Calendar. Calendario. Calendario. Calendar. He marcado nuestro aniversario en el calendario. I marked our anniversary on the calendar. He marcado nuestro aniversario en el calendario. Lunes. Monday. Lunes. Lunes. Monday. La semana laboral empieza el lunes. The work week starts on Monday. La semana laboral empieza el lunes. Martes. Tuesday. Martes. Martes. Tuesday. Martes, 1 de enero. Tuesday, January the 1st. Martes, 1 de enero. Miércoles. Wednesday. Miércoles. Miércoles. Wednesday. Miércoles 18. Wednesday the 18th. Miércoles 18. Jueves. Thursday. Jueves. Jueves. Thursday. El jueves. On Thursday. El jueves. Viernes. Friday. Viernes. Viernes. Friday. Viernes, 8 de diciembre. Friday, December 8th. Viernes, 8 de diciembre. Sábado. Saturday. Sábado. 
Sábado. Saturday. Sábado noche. Saturday night. Sábado noche. Domingo. Sunday. Domingo. Domingo. Sunday. Hoy es domingo. Today is Sunday. Hoy es domingo. Hacer. Do. Hacer. Hacer. Do. Hacerlo todo. To do it all. Hacerlo todo. Ir. Go. Ir. Ir. Go. Ir al parque. Go to the park. Ir al parque. Remember, the goal of this series is to build a vocabulary of the 800 most common words and phrases in Spanish. If that sounds like a lot, don't worry, we can help you. Click the link in the description to access the full list. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources at SpanishPop101.com. See you next time. Adios. Now that you're finished with this lesson, don't forget, as a free bonus, you get over 30 conversation cheat sheets, but only if you sign up via the link in the description. You'll learn how to have flowing conversations and how to answer the most common questions. You can also print out these colorful cheat sheets to keep as physical study material. So don't miss out on this free gift. Click the link in the description and sign up for a free lifetime account to get your PDF cheat sheets. Hi, my name is Rosa and today we'll be doing the top 25 adjectives in Spanish. So let's begin. Fácil, easy. Washing dishes is easy. Eh, lavar los platos es fácil. Hablar español es fácil. Eh, speaking Spanish is easy. Memorizing things is easy for me. Memorizar cosas es fácil para mí. Difícil, difficult. The next one is difícil, eh, difficult. Tu, 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 tu. Eh, recordar la letra de las canciones es difícil. Remember lyrics of songs is difficult. Grande, large. Grande, which means large. El patio de su casa es muy grande. The patio of his house is very large. Él comió una hamburguesa grande de un bocado. He ate a large burger in one bite. Pequeño, small. The next one is pequeño, which means small. Este plato es muy pequeño para mí. Uh, this dish is very small for me. These pants are small for me. Estos pantalones me quedan pequeños. Joven, young. The next one is joven, which means young. Todos dicen que mi madre parece muy joven. Everyone says that my mother looks very young. <laughs> Me gustaría ser joven eternamente. I would like to be young forever. Viejo, old. Esta ropa es muy vieja. Uh, these clothes are very old. He looks much older because he smokes a lot. Uh, él parece mucho más viejo porque fuma demasiado. Nuevo, new. The next one is nuevo which means new. Este reloj es nuevo. This clock is new. ¿Te gusta tu nuevo trabajo? Do you like your new job? Bueno, good. This food is very good. Esta comida está muy buena. The weather is not very good today. El tiempo no es muy bueno hoy. Malo, bad. The next one is malo, which means bad. The witch in that tale is very bad. La bruja en ese cuento es muy mala. Do you think there are good and bad people? ¿Piensas que hay gente buena y mala? Este estofado está muy malo. This stew is very bad. Poco, little bit. The next one is poco, which means a little bit. I want a bit of this, please. Quiero un poco de eso, por favor. You eat too little. Comes demasiado poco. Mucho, a lot of. ¿Cocinaste mucha comida? You cooked a lot of food. Me gustaría tener mucho tiempo. I would like to have lots of time. Te quiero mucho. I like you a lot. <laughs> claro, clear. 
It's very clear what this means. Está muy claro lo que significa. Is everything clear? Está todo claro. Oscuro, dark. Oscuro, which means dark. Come to the dark side. Ven al lado oscuro. <laughs> ¿Te da miedo cuando está muy oscuro? Are you scared when it's too dark? Importante, important. My friends are very important to me. Mis amigos son muy importantes para mí. Now is very important. El ahora es muy importante. Libre, free. Libre, which means free. Este asiento está libre. This seat is free. Quiero ser libre como un pájaro. I want to be free as a bird. <laughs> alto, high. Alto, which means high. Este edificio es muy alto. This building is very high. The price is very high. El precio está muy alto. Bajo, low. Bajo, which means low. El techo es muy bajo. The roof is very low. Lejos, far. The next one is lejos, which means far. Mi casa está muy lejos de aquí. My house is very far from here. Cerca, close. The next one is cerca, which means close. Mm, there's a supermarket close to my house. <laughs> Hay un supermercado cerca de mi casa. Interesante, interesting. Learning about other cultures is interesting. Aprender de otras culturas es interesante. It would be interesting to know his story. Sería interesante conocer su historia. Aburrido, boring. The next word is aburrido, which means boring. My English teacher used to be very boring. Eh, mi profesora de inglés era muy aburrida. Cleaning is boring. <laughs> Limpiar es aburrido. Largo, long. The next one is largo, which means long. Me gustan las faldas largas. I like long skirts. Esta carretera es muy larga. This road is very long. Corto, short. The next one is corto, which means short. But we use this with objects, but not with people. Like we would say a person is bajo, but not corto. <laughs> this composition is very short. Esta redacción es muy corta. Limpio, clean. The next one is limpio, which means clean. Eh, mi habitación nunca está limpia, según mi madre. Eh, my room is never clean to my mother. Sucio, dirty. The next word is sucio, which means dirty. My hair is very dirty. I need to wash it. Eh, mi pelo está muy sucio. Necesito lavarlo. When I played outside, I used to get very dirty. Cuando jugaba afuera, solía ensuciarme mucho. So this is the end of today's top 25 adjectives in Spanish. I hope you learned something useful and thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Ah. <laughs>
what is your favorite place? Mi lugar favorito de España es Barcelona. My favorite place in Spain is Barcelona. Parte, part. The next one is parte, which means part. Esto es parte de la historia. This is part of the story. Parte de mí quiere volver a estudiar y parte de mí no. Uh, part of me wants to go back to study and part of me doesn't. Tiempo, time. The next one is tiempo, which means time or also weather. What's the weather like? ¿Qué tiempo hace? Her running time was uh, 20 minutes. Uh, su tiempo de carrera fue de 20 minutos. El tiempo pasa muy rápido. Time, time passes by very quickly. Casa, house, home. The next one is casa, which means house and home. I've never lived in a house. Nunca he vivido en una casa. I would like to live in a beach house. Me gustaría vivir en una casa de playa. Hoy, today. The next one is hoy, which means today. Hoy va a llover. Today it's going to rain. Today I had pancakes for breakfast. Hoy comí tortitas por el desayuno. Hoy tengo muchas cosas que hacer. Today I have lots of things to do. Ayer, yesterday. The next one is ayer, which means yesterday. Ayer estuve grabando otros vídeos. Yesterday I was recording other videos. Yesterday is history. El ayer es historia. <laughs> mañana, morning, tomorrow. The next one is mañana, which means morning and also tomorrow. Eh, mañana es mi día libre. Tomorrow it's my day off. Lo primero que hago cuando me levanto por la mañana es desayunar. Uh, the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is having breakfast. El mañana es un misterio. Tomorrow is a mystery. Semana, week. The next one is semana, which means week. Esta semana estoy viajando. This week I'm traveling. La semana que viene voy a comer los donuts fritos de mi madre. Next week I'm going to eat my mother's fried donuts. Mes, month. The next one is mes, which means month. Mi mes preferido es mayo. My favorite month is May. El mes que viene quiero conseguir mi permiso de conducir. Next month I want to get my driver's license. Hombre, man. The next one is hombre, which means man. Mankind has made a great progress in technology. Eh, el hombre ha hecho un enorme progreso en tecnología. Mujer, woman. The next one is mujer, which means woman. Esa mujer trabaja demasiado. That woman works too much. El nombre de su mujer es María. His wife's name is María. Señor, gentleman. The next one is señor, which means gentleman. Ladies and gentlemen, señoras y señores. País, country. País, which means country. What's your favorite country? ¿Cuál es tu país preferido? Este país es muy diferente del mío. This country is very different from mine. I like the country Thailand because it has great food. Me gusta el país Tailandia porque su comida es increíble. Mundo, world. The next word is mundo, which means world. When you're, for example, visiting another country and you meet someone from your own country, you can say, uh, el mundo es un pañuelo. The world is a handkerchief, meaning that the world is too small. No me lo creo. I can't believe it. The world is a handkerchief. The world goes round and round. El mundo gira y gira. Ay. Trabajo, work, job. Trabajo, which means work and job. ¿Cuál es tu trabajo? What is your job? Ay. In Spain, a job is normally 40 hours a week. Eh, en España, un trabajo normalmente es de 40 horas a la semana. A job that I would like to do would be an illustrator. Persona, person. The next one is persona, which means person. Eres mi persona preferida. You're my favorite person. I am a shy person. Eh, soy una persona tímida. <laughs> cosa, thing. The next one is cosa, which means thing. Tengo muchas cosas que hacer. I've got a lot of things to do. The thing I like most about this place is the service. Eh, la cosa que me gusta más de este sitio es el servicio. Ciudad, city. The next one is ciudad, which means city. Mi ciudad no es muy grande. My city is not very big. Very big cities can be a bit stressful for me. Eh, las ciudades muy grandes pueden ser un poco estresantes para mí. Agua, water. The next one is agua, which means water. Tu cuerpo es dos tercios de agua. Your body is two thirds of water. Bring a bottle of water with you when you exercise. 
Lleva una botella de agua cuando hagas ejercicio. Música, music. The next one is música, eh, which means music. Hace algunos años solo escuchaba música hardcore. Eh, some years ago I only listened to hardcore music. And this is the end of today's top 25 nouns in Spanish. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope you learned something useful today. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Bye. The world is a handkerchief. Hi everybody, I'm Rosa from SpanishPod101.com. Do you know how to say I love you in Spanish? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say I love you and a special phrase for Valentine's Day. Let's start with the most common phrase. Te amo. Te amo. I love you. This phrase is direct. You should use it only when you are confessing your love. If you want to be less direct, you can use this phrase. Significas mucho para mí. Significas mucho para mí. It means, you mean so much to me. Now, if you want to be more romantic in expressing your love for someone, you can say this phrase. Las palabras no pueden describir mi amor por ti. Las palabras no pueden describir mi amor por ti. It means, words cannot describe my love for you. Now you know three different ways to say I love you in Spanish. And here's one more. What if you want to spend Valentine's Day with someone special? In that case, you can say, ¿Quieres ser mi Valentín? ¿Quieres ser mi Valentín? It means, will you be my Valentine? Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the expression and repeat after me. I love you. Te amo. Te amo. You mean so much to me. Significas mucho para mí. Significas mucho para mí. Words cannot describe my love for you. Las palabras no pueden describir mi amor por ti. Las palabras no pueden describir mi amor por ti. Will you be my Valentine? ¿Quieres ser mi Valentín? ¿Quieres ser mi Valentín? Well done. Here's a fun fact. Do you know which songs are most often dedicated to lovers on Valentine's Day in Spain? Some of the most frequently dedicated songs by people in love on this day are Me enamora by Juanes, Juntos by Paloma San Basilio, and Si tú no estás by El sueño de Morfeo. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Spanish and one special phrase for Valentine's Day. Also, don't forget to download your free cheat sheet on how to be a good lover in Spain including words for romance, compliments, and pickup lines. Check out the description below and go to SpanishPod101.com now. I'll see you next time. Nos vemos.
¡Nos vemos! How are your Spanish listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear the question in Spanish. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Un hombre y una mujer están viendo el menú en un restaurante. ¿Qué ordenó el hombre? ¿Qué te gustaría ordenar? Esta pizza se ve deliciosa. La ordenaré. Yo comí pizza ayer. Así que... Ay, entonces, ¿cómo ves esta hamburguesa? Suena bien. La ordenaré. ¿Qué ordenó el hombre? Un hombre y una mujer están viendo el menú en un restaurante. ¿Qué ordenó el hombre? ¿Qué te gustaría ordenar? Esta pizza se ve deliciosa. La ordenaré. Yo comí pizza ayer, así que... Ay, entonces, ¿cómo ves esta hamburguesa? Suena bien. La ordenaré. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi, everyone. Do you know how to say I love you in Spanish? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. Let's start with how to express your feelings to your loved one. Te amo. Te amo. Te amo. Or, if you want to explain those butterflies in your stomach, you can say... Me estoy enamorando de ti. Me estoy enamorando de ti. Me estoy enamorando de ti. And when you feel that I love you is not enough, you can say... Las palabras no pueden describir mi amor por ti. Las palabras no pueden describir mi amor por ti. Las palabras no pueden describir mi amor por ti. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Spanish. And if you're interested in learning more, don't forget to download your free Romance and Love Cheat Sheet, which includes romantic words, compliments, and pickup lines. Check out the description below and go to SpanishPod101.com now. See you next time! Hola a todos, soy Lucía. Hi everybody, I am Lucía. Welcome to SpanishPod101.com. Español en tres minutos, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Spanish. In the last lesson, we learned some words used when apologizing in Spanish, including disculpe and perdón. In this lesson, we are going to learn numbers in Spanish. Yes, numbers, los números, from one to ten. And you are going to learn them in only three minutes. Tres minutos. Are you ready? Let's start. Uno. Uno, dos, dos, tres, tres, cuatro, cuatro, cinco, cinco, seis, seis, siete, siete, ocho, ocho, nueve, nueve, diez, diez. Okay. Now repeat after me. I will say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, 
nueve, diez. Great job. What's before uno? Do you know? It's similar to English, but has a slightly different pronunciation. Cero. Cero. You don't have any more excuses. Now, you can give your phone number to friends in Spanish. Let's do it together. We will use the phrase mi número es, which means my number is. Mi número es. Mi número es. Nueve, tres, cinco, cinco, cuatro, dos, siete, seis, uno, ocho. Now it's time for Lucia's insights. When we go to the post office in Peru, we sometimes have to stand in line with a number. They will scream, numero uno, numero dos, and so on. Learn your numbers well, so you can be ready. Do you know the Spanish word for a hundred? Here is a hint. It's similar to a common English word. In the next lesson, we are going to learn the numbers from 11 to 100 in Spanish. Your task now is to practice the number we study in this lesson, from 1 to 10. Hasta la próxima. See you soon. Hola a todos. Soy Lucía. Hi everyone, I am Lucía. Welcome to SpanishPond101.com. Español en tres minutos. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Spanish. In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Spanish. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use good manners as we thank people. ¿Están listos? Are you ready? Empecemos. Let's start. There are several ways to thank someone. Let's start with the easiest. It's just one word. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias means thank you. To say thank you very much, you just need to add muchas before it. Muchas means very or a lot. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. For a simple thanks, gracias will be enough. If you want to say more than just thanks, muchas gracias is good to use. Now, how do you respond to thank you in Spanish? It's easy. The most common way to say you're welcome is de nada. De nada. Nada means nothing. So, de nada literally means it's nothing. So, we use it to mean you're welcome. So, when someone says gracias to you, you can simply reply with de nada. Now, it's time for Lucia's insights. If you're not sure about whether to use gracias or muchas gracias, Keep it simple is always your safest bet. You don't have to worry about formal or informal situations. Gracias can be used with just about anyone, anywhere, and at any time. Do you know how to say goodbye to your friends in Spanish? In our next lesson, we will learn these and other greetings. Hasta la próxima. See you then. In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Spanish. Hi everybody, my name is Rosa. Welcome to the 800 Core Spanish Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Spanish, but there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at SpanishPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Spanish. Okay, let's get started. First is... Hola. Hello. Hola. Hola. Hello. Cuando conozco a alguien por primera vez, me gusta decir hola. When I first meet someone, I like to say hello. Cuando conozco a alguien por primera vez, me gusta decir hola. 
Disculpe. Excuse me. Disculpe. Disculpe. Excuse me. Disculpe. Me gustaría ir al ayuntamiento. Excuse me. I'd like to go to the city hall. Disculpe. Me gustaría ir al ayuntamiento. Lo siento. I'm sorry. Lo siento. Lo siento. I'm sorry. Lo siento. No está aquí ahora mismo. I'm sorry. He's not here right now. Lo siento. No está aquí ahora mismo. Buenas noches. Good night. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Good night. Los niños vienen a la planta de abajo para decirnos buenas noches. The kids come downstairs to tell us good night. Los niños vienen a la planta de abajo para decirnos buenas noches. Encantado de conocerte. Nice to meet you. Encantado de conocerte. Encantado de conocerte. Nice to meet you. Encantado de conocerle, señor. Nice to meet you, sir. Encantado de conocerle, señor. ¿Cómo estás? How are you? ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? How are you? ¿Qué hay de nuevo? ¿Cómo estás? What's new? How are you? ¿Qué hay de nuevo? ¿Cómo estás? Sí. Yes. Sí. Sí. Yes. Sí. Está buenísimo. Yes. It's delicious. Sí. Está buenísimo. No. 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 Señal de no. No sign. Señal de no. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias por venir. Thank you for coming. Gracias por venir. Me llamo. I'm name. Me llamo. Me llamo. I'm name. Me llamo John. I'm John. Me llamo John. Adiós. Goodbye. Adiós. Adiós. Goodbye. Estaba triste por decirle adiós a su novio. She was sad to say goodbye to her boyfriend. Estaba triste por decirle 
Adiós a su novio. Malo. Bad. Malo. Malo. Bad. El hombre es malo. The man is bad. El hombre es malo. Bueno. Good. Bueno. Bueno. Good. Las verduras son buenas para ti. Vegetables are good for you. Las verduras son buenas para ti. Guapa. Pretty. Guapa. Guapa. Pretty. Es guapa. She is pretty. Es guapa. Feo. Ugly. Feo. Feo. Ugly. Rostro feo. Ugly face. Rostro feo. Fácil. Easy. Fácil. Fácil. Easy. Decisión fácil. Easy decision. Decisión fácil. Difícil. Difficult. Difícil. Difícil. Difficult. Muy difícil. Very difficult. Muy difícil. Cerca. Near. Cerca. Cerca. Near. La manzana está cerca de la naranja. The apple is near the orange. La manzana está cerca de la naranja. Lejos. Far. Lejos. Lejos. Far. La mujer está viendo algo a lo lejos. The woman is looking at something far away. La mujer está viendo algo a lo lejos. Pequeño. Small. Pequeño. Pequeño. Small. Muy pequeña. Very small. Muy pequeña. Remember, the goal of this series is to build a vocabulary of the 800 most common words and phrases in Spanish. If that sounds like a lot, don't worry, we can help you. Click the link in the description to access the full list. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources at SpanishPod101.com. See you next time. Adios. Hola, soy Brenda, tu profesora de español. Hoy vamos a ver una de las diferencias entre el pretérito y el imperfecto. Today, we're going to have a look at one of the differences between the pretérito and el imperfecto. As you know, we have two different um, Spanish tenses for the simple past in Spanish, and that is the pretérito o eh, pasado simple and the imperfecto. So one of the main differences that I always tell my students is that el pretérito is going to move the story 
forward, the story. Is that the preterito is going to move the story forward. So is the, is the preterito is the one that is going to tell the story. This happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. On the other hand, el imperfecto is going to describe in a story, is going to describe the setting, how the characters, who was involved in the story, um, what was the day like? What was that person like? Who were you with? What were you feeling? So anything that is a description in a story in the past will use the imperfecto and not the preterito. That's the main difference. So with the imperfecto, we're going to get information and we're going to describe the setting, the time, the people, the feelings, everything that is related to the description of the story. And with the preterito, what we are going to do is move the story forward. We're going to tell the story. The preterito will say what happened and the imperfecto will say who was there, what, where, where were you, is going to set up the story. Have a look at this example. Eran las dos de la mañana. Hacía mucho frío y llovía. Estaba con Romina en una habitación muy oscura que tenía muy poca luz. De repente, escuchamos un ruido muy fuerte. Con miedo, caminamos hasta la cocina. Encendimos la luz y vimos al gato del vecino. <ríe> ¡Qué susto! Muy bien. So as you can see in this example, at the beginning, I was describing the story, the setting of the story what time it was, eran las dos de la mañana, uh, what was the weather like, hacía frío y llovía, uh, who I was with, estaba con Romina, where were we, en una habitación muy oscura que tenía poca luz. So I'm describing the room, can you see? Now I have a question for you, what happened? Up until that point, absolutely nothing. We are just describing the setting and that's why we are using the imperfecto. Now is when the story starts and I'm going to tell you what actually happened and I'm going to use the, the preterito for that. I said, de repente, that's a great clue um, that will tell us specifically that we're going to use the, the preterito. We're talking about a story, something that happened. De repente, escuchamos un ruido. We heard a noise. Okay, that's something that happened, number one. Caminamos hasta la cocina. Okay, so we walked there. Encendimos la luz. We turned the light on. Vimos al gato del vecino. We saw the neighbor's cat. So, uh, as you can see, all these uh, actions were in the preterito because we're telling the story, we're moving the story forward, we're telling you what happened. Muy bien, estudiantes. I really hope that you can understand a little bit better this aspect and the main differences in storytelling specifically when we use the preterito versus when we use the imperfecto. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next class. Adiós. Hi. Welcome to Introduction to Spanish. My name is Alicia and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Leah. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Spanish grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. Consider the English sentence, I read books. If we break down the English sentence, I read books, we can see that the subject, I, is presented first, followed by the verb read, and then finally the object, books, is positioned last. The basic word order for English, then, is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. Now, let's compare that same sentence, I read books, in Spanish. Yo leo libros. If we break down the Spanish sentence, we get the subject, yo, meaning I, then comes the verb, leo, meaning read, and finally we have the object, libros, meaning books. The word order for basic Spanish, then, is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. As you can see, the word order for sentences in Spanish is the same as that of English. This means that you can essentially swap out English words for Spanish words in an English sentence to convert it to Spanish. So imagine you wanted to say, I ate an apple, but in Spanish. Just swap out the words. I in Spanish is yo. Ate in Spanish is comí. An is una, 
and apple is manzana. Altogether, it's yo comí una manzana. So, I ate an apple in Spanish is yo comí una manzana. You can form nearly all basic sentences in Spanish just by following the SVO word order. We just saw how easy it was to form basic sentences in Spanish and how similar it was to forming basic English sentences. Luckily, it's actually even easier to form sentences in Spanish than it is in English. That's because Spanish is much more flexible when it comes to word order compared to English. Let's go back to the two examples we used earlier. More often than not, if we wanted to say, I read books and I ate an apple in Spanish, we would not usually say, Yo leo libros. Yo comí una manzana. But instead, we would just say, Leo libros. Comí una manzana. Notice how the subject I is omitted from the sentence. This is how most Spanish sentences are constructed and spoken in real life. When it's clear who or what the subject is, most Spanish speakers would omit the subject altogether. Yo leo libros and yo comí una manzana would only be used if the subject is unclear or if you wanted to place a stronger emphasis on the subject, as if to say, I am the one who reads books or I was the one who ate the apple. So, most of the time, we can actually express any simple action in Spanish with just two words, the verb and the object in Spanish. So far, we've only looked at affirmative sentences in Spanish. But what if you wanted to make the sentence negative? Well, that's very easy as well. All you have to do is just add no before the verb and that's it. So, I don't read books would be... No leo libros. Same thing for I didn't eat an apple. Just add no before the verb. No comí una manzana. And that's all there is to it. Once again, it's much simpler to form questions in Spanish than it is in English. There's actually a variety of different methods of forming a question in Spanish. Let's go through some of them. We'll seem a little strange if we ask our own selves a question in Spanish. So let's introduce a new subject. Let's go with Juan, a very typical Spanish name. So instead of I read books, we now have Juan reads books. Juan lee libros. The simplest way we can turn that statement into a question is by just raising our intonation at the end of the sentence. Juan lee libros? Meaning, does Juan read books? In conversation, we just need to raise the intonation at the end to express that it's a question. In writing, however, we have to include the question mark at the end, just like in English. But unlike English, questions in Spanish are marked with an inverted question mark at the beginning of the question as well. Juan lee libros? Another simple way we can turn a statement into a question is by adding a question tag at the end of a sentence. One question tag in English, for example, is right? Something something statement, right? It works in exactly the same way in Spanish. Juan lee libros, no? Juan reads books, doesn't he? The final way to make a sentence in Spanish is to actually switch the verb and the subject. So statements in Spanish would normally be SVO, but to formulate a question, it'll be VSO. The verb and subject are switched. Lee Juan libros? Meaning, does Juan read books? All of these questions mean the same thing, but they're not completely identical. There are tiny nuances that go along with the method you use to formulate a question. The first and last examples appear to have exactly the same meaning. But Juan lee libros places a greater emphasis on Juan because the subject appears first in the sentence, as opposed to lee Juan libros, where the emphasis is on the verb. As you can see, there are many ways to form basic questions in Spanish. In this lesson, you learned about the word order of Spanish, how to form affirmative and negative sentences, about the omission of the subject, and how to form questions. We've covered only the very basics of Spanish grammar. If you're interested in learning more, check out our Spanish in 3 Minutes video series. In that course, we teach you useful phrases while covering the fundamentals of Spanish grammar, and each lesson is only 3 minutes long. In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of Spanish writing. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! Hi, my name is Rosa, and today we will be doing the top 25 phrases in Spanish. So the first one is, hola, hello, hola, which means hello. Hola is a very casual way to greet someone. So you can say hola to your friends and hola to your family and hola to everyone. 
Adiós. Goodbye. Adiós is goodbye. I don't know why, but to me, adiós sounds a bit harsh. So I don't really like saying adiós. It sounds like you're not going to see that person again, maybe. <laughs> so instead of adiós, I would maybe use hasta luego, which is see you later. Buenos días. Good morning. The next one is buenos días, which is good morning. Yep, you say it when you see someone in the morning. So, <sighs> buenos días. <laughs> Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes, <laughs> which is good afternoon. Buenas tardes is used uh, from 12 p.m. on. So, yeah, maybe you are having lunch and you see someone, so you say, buenas tardes. <laughs> buenas noches. Good night. The next one is buenas noches, which means good night. Say like goodbye. When you are going to sleep, you say buenas noches. Is the last thing you say. Buenas noches. Sí. Yes. The next phrase is sí, which means yes. <laughs> For example, if someone asks me, do you want a slice of cheesecake? I would say sí. No. No. Uh, the next phrase is no, which means no. <laughs> For example, do you want to do your homework? No. Nos vemos. See you later. Uh, the next one is nos vemos, which is see you later. Very casual. So yeah, you can say it to your friends or yeah, to your family, whatever, when you want to say like goodbye. See you soon. <laughs> hasta mañana. See you tomorrow. The next one is hasta mañana, which means see you tomorrow. For example, if you are mm, at the university and you want to uh, say goodbye to your friends, which you won't be seeing until tomorrow, you would say, hasta mañana. ¿Cuál es tu nombre? What is your name? So the next phrase is, ¿cuál es tu nombre? Uh, which means, what is your name? Uh, mi nombre es Rosa. And yep, yeah, what is your name? Tell me. <laughs> Yo soy Rosa. I am Rosa. The next phrase is, yo soy, plus your name. So in my case, yo soy Rosa. And it means, I am Rosa. What's your name? Encantado de conocerle. Nice to meet you. The next phrase is, encantado de conocerle, which is nice to meet you. But the thing is that encantado de conocerle uh, is a bit formal. So if you want to say to your friends or, I don't know, family, uh, you could say, encantado de conocerte. Encantado de conocerte. <laughs> Gracias. Thank you. The next phrase is gracias, which is thank you. If you want to say thank you very much, you would say eh, muchas gracias. Thank you for watching this video. Eh, gracias por ver este video. Thank you. De nada. You're welcome. And the next phrase is de nada, eh, which means you're welcome. So yep, yeah, whenever someone says thank you to you, make sure to say de nada. <laughs> no hay de qué. Don't mention it. The next phrase is, no hay de qué, don't mention it. So if you do a favor to someone and that someone says thank you to you, gracias, uh, you could say, no hay de qué. <laughs> por favor, please. The next one is por favor, which means please. So if you want to ask for a favor uh, to someone, you would say, por favor. <laughs> por favor, suscribiros a este canal. <laughs> please subscribe to this channel. <laughs> Perdón, sorry. The next one is perdón, <laughs> which is sorry. If you haven't heard something properly and you want the other person to repeat it, you can say perdón. <laughs> lo siento, sorry. The next one is lo siento, I'm sorry. So if you did something wrong, uh, that's what you say. So for example, if you get late to class, uh, you would say to the, to the teacher, lo siento, <laughs> bienvenidos, welcome. The next one is bienvenidos, which is welcome, bienvenido. <laughs> if someone is coming to your house, you can say bienvenidos. <laughs> ¿Cómo estás? How are you? The next one is ¿Cómo estás? Which means how are you? It's not a formal uh, way to say it, but maybe a more informal way would be ¿Qué tal? But yeah, I think you can use ¿Cómo estás? Like with almost everyone. Like sometimes when you ask, ¿Cómo estás? Uh, you want like a more in-depth answer. Like you don't want a simple, I'm fine, but you really want to know how that person is. 
but maybe ¿qué tal? is more casual and it's just like you just want to hear I'm fine, <laughs> thank you. For example, if you ask someone ¿cómo estás? that person could tell you I'm not very good, I lost my job and I'm trying to find a new one, but hmm, something like that. ¿Qué hora es? What time is it? The next one is ¿Qué hora es? What time is it? Uh, so now it's four o'clock, uh, las cuatro en punto. ¿Cuánto es? How much? The next one is ¿Cuánto es? Uh, how much? So when you enter a shop and you want to know the price of something, you can say ¿Cuánto es? Also you can say ¿Cuánto cuesta? It's the same thing. ¿Qué es eso? What is that? The next one is ¿Qué es eso? What is that? <laughs> yeah, you can point at something and ask ¿Qué es eso? <laughs> ¿En dónde está el baño? Where is the bathroom? The next one is ¿En dónde está el baño? Uh, where is the bathroom? Yeah, very useful <laughs> phrase to know. So, for example, if you are in a restaurant and you want to go to the bathroom, you can ask the waiter ¿Dónde está el baño? And then the waiter indicates you and you go to the bathroom. <laughs> no lo comprendo. I don't understand. The next one is no lo comprendo, which is I don't understand it. If someone is talking to you and you are a bit lost, you can say lo siento, sorry, eh, no lo comprendo, I don't understand. If they are nice, they will try to explain it better to you. <laughs> also, eh, instead of comprendo, you can also say entiendo. So, eh, no lo entiendo, it would be the same thing. This is the end. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed these top 25 phrases in Spanish and don't forget to subscribe. Bye. I am a bit shy, I don't know. I don't know. Welcome to SpanishPod101.com, Español en 3 minutos, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Spanish. Hola, soy Lucia, mucho gusto. Hi, I'm Lucia, nice to meet you. In this series, we are going to learn basic Spanish phrases. It's super easy and it only takes 3 minutes. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to introduce yourself in Spanish. You will be surprised at how easy it is. Are you ready? Listen again to my introduction. Hola, soy Lucia. Mucho gusto. Hi, I'm Lucia. Nice to meet you. Hola, soy Lucia. Mucho gusto. The first word is hola, which means hi or hello. After that comes soy, which means I am. Hola, soy, and then your name. Hola, soy Lucia means hi, I'm Lucia. Finally, say mucho gusto, which means nice to meet you. So all together it is, hola, soy Lucia, mucho gusto. Hi, I'm Lucia, nice to meet you. It's a polite and common way to greet someone. There is also another way to say your name. Instead of soy Lucia, you could say me llamo Lucia. Me llamo, literally means I call myself, but we use it to mean my name is. Hola, me llamo Lucia. Mucho gusto. Hi, my name is Lucia. Nice to meet you. Hola, me llamo Lucia. Mucho gusto. Again, let's take a look at these two ways to introduce yourself. Hola, soy Lucia. Mucho gusto. Hi, I'm Lucia. Nice to meet you. Hola, me llamo Lucia. Mucho gusto. Hi, my name is Lucia. Nice to meet you. Now it's time for Lucia's insights. People in Spanish-speaking countries greet each other by shaking hands. But depending on the situation, we often kiss each other on the cheek. So don't be surprised if this happens to you. Do you know how we say thank you in Spanish? You will learn how to say this and many other words in the next lesson. Hasta la próxima. See you then.
Hola a todos, soy Lucía. Hi everybody, I'm Lucía. Welcome to SpanishPod101.com, español en tres minutos. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Spanish. In the last lesson, we learned the most common greeting in Spanish. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we are going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you're in a situation where you need help in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. Here is a formal way to say it. Habla inglés? Habla inglés? Again, this means, do you speak English? The word habla is a form of the verb hablar, which means to speak. This is the formal way to say you speak. Hablar is known as an AR verb because it ends in AR. Most AR verbs conjugate in a similar way. To learn how to properly conjugate AR verbs, like hablar, please check out our Absolute Beginner series on SpanishPod101.com. Now, let's make this sentence informal. This is done by adding an S to the end of habla. When we do that, we get hablas. All together, hablas inglés, hablas inglés. This is the informal way to ask, do you speak English? The responses you receive could be one of these three. Sí, hablo inglés. Yes, I speak English. Sí, hablo inglés. Sí, hablo un poco. Yes, I speak a little. Sí, hablo un poco. No, no hablo inglés. No, I don't speak English. No hablo inglés. In all of this, hablo means I speak. In the last one, we have no hablo, which is the negative form. It means I don't speak. Now it's time for Lucia's insights. If you want to ask about a different language, just change the word inglés. Here are some language names to get you started. Italiano for Italian. Ruso for Russia, Francais for French, Alemán for German. Do you know how to say I'm sorry in Spanish? In the next lesson, you will learn how to apologize and more. Hasta la próxima. See you then. Hola a todos, soy Lucía. Hi everybody, I'm Lucía. Welcome to SpanishPod101.com, español en tres minutos. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Spanish. In the last lesson, we learned how to show thanks by saying gracias. In this lesson, we will learn some of the most common greetings used in Spanish. ¿Están listos? Are you ready? Empecemos, let's start. The most used informal greeting is hola. Hola. Hola means hi or hello. We can use it in formal and informal situations at any time of day. It's very convenient. Hola. Now, let's look at some greetings that are used at certain times of day. First is good morning. Good morning in Spanish is buenos días. Buenos días. Buenos días literally means good day, but we use it to mean good morning. During the day, we say buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes means good afternoon. This can be used all day, as long as it's light outside. Again, buenas tardes. When it starts to get dark, you can switch to this. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Buenas noches means good evening or good night, depending on the situation. If you're greeting someone in the evening, it means good evening. If you're speaking to someone before you go to sleep, it means good night. Again, that's buenas noches. Now, you can greet people in many different ways in Spanish. Let's review them all again. As a general greeting, hola. In the morning, buenos días. In the afternoon or during the day, buenas tardes. 
In the evening or at night, buenas noches. Pretty easy, right? Now it's time for Lucia's insights. If you are not sure which greeting is right to use, buenos días, buenas tardes, or buenas noches, just remember that hola can be used at any time of day. During the next lesson, you will learn the meaning of habla inglés. Do you already know it? In our next lesson, you will learn this phrase and more. Hasta la próxima. See you then. Hi, my name is Rosa. Uh, today we'll be doing uh, the top 25 verbs in Spanish. So let's go. <laughs> ser, be. The first one is ser, which is the verb to be. To be is more related to who you are. Like, for example, I am Rosa, yo soy Rosa, quiero ser una ilustradora. I want to be an illustrator, but I don't draw very well, so I don't know. <laughs> estar, be. The next one is estar, which is also to be. So you can use it, for example, if you are in a place, I'm in a café, eh, estoy en una cafetería, I am happy. Estoy contenta. The adjectives you use with star uh, speak of something like more transitory, but when you use the verb ser, the last one, is about something more permanent. So, for example, yo soy Rosa, I am Rosa, and I will be Rosa tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, but, for example, it is cloudy, está nublado, with the verb star. It doesn't mean that tomorrow it will also be cloudy. Ir. Go. The next one is ir, to go. So ir is an irregular verb, so the conjugation is a bit different. I am going to do something. Voy a hacer algo. Venir, come. The next one is venir, which is come. He comes at seven. Él viene a las siete. And that means that he comes to this place where I am now. <laughs> tomar, take. The next one is tomar which means take, you grab something, tomas algo. Yo tomo mi botella de agua, eh, I take my bottle of water. Comer, eat. Well, I love this one. <laughs> the next one is comer, which is eat. I like eating too much. Me gusta comer demasiado. <laughs> I love also like sweet potatoes. Usar, use. The next one is usar, eh, which means use, ropa usada. Used clothes. Uso mi teléfono. I use my mobile phone. Yeah, I bought it yesterday. <laughs> I use my ears to listen. <laughs> Uso mis orejas para escuchar. Where I live is a very small city, so I don't use a car. Eh, no uso un coche, but I use my feet. Uso mis piernas. <laughs> querer, want, desire, love. So the next one is querer, which can be translated as want, eh, desire, love. For example, uh, I love you is te quiero. But for example, you can also say, I want an ice cream. Uh, quiero un helado. I want to be a singer. Quiero ser cantante. Yeah, I like singing too. <laughs> hacer, do. Uh, the next one is hacer, uh, which means to do. So you can, for example, do your homework, hacer los deberes. You could also translate it as make. We don't differentiate between do and make in Spanish. For example, if you make a soup, uh, you could say hacer una sopa. <laughs> I look like a witch. <laughs> Exercise. <laughs> you can say hacer ejercicio. Tener, have. Uh, the next one is tener, uh, which is to have. I have friends. <laughs> that sounds so sad. <laughs> tengo amigos. I have a dog. Uh, tengo un perro. I have to eat more vegetables. Tengo que comer más verduras. <laughs> haber, have, has. So the next one is haber. So for example, you can use it as an auxiliary verb, uh, as you do in English. I have done this. Yo he, from the verb haber, hecho esto. You can also use it by itself. Uh, there is. Hay chocolate en el armario. There's chocolate in the cupboard. Gustar. Like. The next one is gustar, eh, which means like. I like you. Eh, me gustas. Eh, me gusta pasear. I like going for a walk. Dar. Give. The next one is dar, which means to give. 
I give you my favorite book. Eh, te doy mi libro preferido. I like a lot Haruki Murakami's books. You can also say, te doy las gracias. For example, if you want to give a present, and you don't really know what to give, you can give them a box of chocolates. Tú das una caja de bombones. They'll be happy receiving them. <laughs> trabajar, work. The next one is trabajar, eh, to work. I work as a secretary. Trabajo de secretaria. Eh, I work a lot. Eh, trabajo mucho. Oír, hear. The next one is oír, to hear. You are receiving sound, but it doesn't mean that you are like paying a lot of attention to that. I hear the birds when I wake up. <laughs> Oigo a los pájaros cuando me levanto. Escuchar, listen. The next one is escuchar, which means to listen. So in this case, you are like paying attention to that you're hearing. I like listening to music while I study. Eh, me gusta escuchar música mientras estudio. Hablar, speak. Talk. Uh, the next one is hablar, uh, which means to speak and talk. I speak Spanish, hablo español, I talk to my friends, hablo con mis amigas. Antes tenía el pelo muy largo, pero un fin de semana eh, se me fue un poco la cabeza y decidí pegarme un tijeretazo y ahora tengo el pelo así bastante corto. <laughs> ver, see, understand. The next one is ver, which means to see uh, and understand. I see you. Eh, te veo. Veo esa serie todos los días. Eh, I like watching that series every day. Mirar. Look. Watch. Consider. The next one is mirar, which can be translated as look and watch and consider. Mirar something. Eh, it means that you are like consciously paying attention to that. I like watching people passing by. Eh, me gusta mirar a la gente pasar. <laughs> Poder, can. The next one is poder, eh, can. Yes, we can. <laughs> I can jump very high. Eh, puedo saltar muy alto. I can eat very spicy food. Puedo comer comida muy picante. Decir, say, tell, call. The next one is decir. So, for example, she said it was okay. Eh, ella dijo que estaba bien. Always say thank you. <laughs> Di siempre gracias. Oler. Smell. The next one is oler, which means smell. <laughs> it smells bad. Huele mal. <laughs> I love smelling jasmine. Eh, me gusta oler las flores de jazmín. Sentir. Feel. Experience. Perceive. The next one is sentir, eh, which is feel, experience, perceive. I haven't slept much, so I feel a bit tired. Me siento un poco cansada. Dejar. Leave. The next one is dejar, which means to leave. Dejo la llave aquí. I leave the key here. Necesitar. Need. Require. The next one is necesitar. Necesito ropa nueva, which is not really true. <laughs> uh, I need new clothes. I need to eat just after waking up. Necesito comer justo después de levantarme. If not, I will get like very grumpy. <laughs> uh, yep, this is the end. I hope you liked this video and you learned a lot with these top 25 verbs in Spanish. And please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Now that you're finished with this lesson, don't forget, as a free bonus, you get over 30 conversation cheat sheets, but only if you sign up via the link in the description. You'll learn how to have flowing conversations and how to answer the most common questions. You can also print out these colorful cheat sheets to keep as physical study material. So don't miss out on this free gift. Click the link in the description and sign up for a free lifetime account to get your PDF cheat sheets.